Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. A little while ago, Adobe updated Lightroom Classic. When they did, I did a video demonstrating some of the new features found in it. One of those new features is something called Content Credentials. In that video, I gave an overview of Content Credentials, and I promised that in the very near future, I would do another video on Content Credentials where I would go into greater detail. That's what we're going to be doing today. Content Credentials. What is it and why you would use it? First of all, what is it? Well, it's, simply put, it's a way for you to identify an image as yours. Now, there's reasons why you may or may want to use it. The first reason is you want it on record that you are the creator of the photo. I mean, yeah, you could put a watermark on the image or you could put copyright uh, info in the metadata, but that could be easily stripped away. Theoretically, content credentials is persistent. It cannot be easily stripped away. It's like a permanent record that an image is yours. Another reason you may want to use content credentials is you want it known that AI was used during the editing process. You may just want people to know, hey, this didn't really happen in real life. I used AI to do part, at least part of the image. Or maybe you're entering a contest and the contest requires that AI not be used Content credentials is a way to prove to them that AI was not used on an image. Another reason is you want people to find your social media accounts. You could link your social media accounts in the content credentials so that if you want people to find more of your work, say, they could find you on Instagram or on Behance or on Twitter and some other places as well. So you could just link your media, social media accounts uh, with your content credentials. And finally, you want a more permanent record of your ownership than metadata can provide. Now, this is kind of like number one here, and I kind of mentioned this already, but you can put copyright in your name in the metadata, but someone could just strip that away. Uh, content credentials, theoretically, would be a little more permanent than that. So let me show you what we're going to do. Let me get rid of this is we are going to edit an image from beginning to end, and I want to show you what information gets stored in the content credentials and how it gets stored there. And then I'm going to show you how to find content credentials in an image. I have this unedited raw file. And if I zoom in, you can see there's a quite a bit of noise. It was shot with ISO 6400. It's not a great image. So I need to do a lot of editing here to make this like halfway decent. One of the things I want to do is I want to use AI noise reduction. And you may be wondering, well, if you use AI noise reduction, is it going to say AI was done to this image? And the answer is no. It will not say AI was done if you use AI noise reduction. It will only say AI was done is if you use, let's say, the, the, um, the generative AI tool. So if you come in and use this brush to remove something, then it's going to say AI was done. Or if you use uh, something to add something to the image, uh, then it will say AI was done. But if you go to the detail tab and you click on denoise here, let's zoom out and get into a better spot. That looks pretty good. We'll click enhance. It will not say that AI was done to the image. So you're, uh, you could, you know, definitely use denoise. It won't be an issue as far as, um, it flagging it as AI was done. So wait for this to done. You can see there's a progress. Wait for this to get done. You can see there's a progress bar in the top left-hand corner. And once it does, it should bring us right to that image. And I think it did. Yep. So this is our noise-reduced image now. So let's uh, go on with our edit. I'll just do a, a relatively quick edit. Um, I'm going to go to... Well, let's stay, I guess, with the uh, AS shot. Let's just flip it this way. I'm going to make it super tight. Make it a lot more kind of interesting. Let's see what that looks like. I think that looks a little more interesting. And now we'll come in and we'll edit some tone. I'll bring uh, highlights down. I'll open up the shadows. I am going to get a white point by holding in the object key. You can see I'm already clipping in the background there. And then I'll come here and get a black point. That looks pretty good. And um, I'm not going to use texture clarity or dehaze uh, globally. Instead, I'm going to use a mask so you could see how it records a mask. And we're going to click on the subject. And I'll go to detail and I want to sharpen the subject up. We'll go to effects and we'll add some texture. 
we'll add some clarity. And let's uh, go to a vignette. So we'll go to effects and we'll add a little bit of a darker vignette. So it's coming along pretty fine. Um, I think, so you could see, I am going to go and I'm going to go to the uh, generative AI remove tool. And I want to just see this little thing above his head. I, tip it, I would probably leave it there, but let's just use it to get rid of this, this here. You know, it's kind of a continuation of what's down here. But let's, uh, let's get, see if we can get rid of it and see what it looks like. Okay, that looks pretty good. Right there. So we'll just close that down. All right, now we're done. Now, the way you use content credentials is during export. So we're going to bring up the export dialog. And I have a preset over here. I call it for my website. Um, if I put images on my website or probably more commonly on my newsletter, I like to have those uh, images, JPEGs with quality at 100. And I like them resized, if I find the resize, to 2,000 pixels on the long edge. So I'm going to go with that. But you'll notice this part right in here are content credentials. And there's a drop down, and by default, it's on, or at least on my preset, it says don't include. But well, we're going to change that, and you have three other options. You could publish to the content credentials cloud, which I recommend you do. You could attach it to the files, and it gets put in the metadata as well. That, though, could get stripped away. So you definitely have a more permanent record if you publish the content credentials to the cloud. But if you prefer, if you're just going to use it locally or whatever, and you want to attach to files, then you could do that. Or you could do both. And for this demonstration, I'll show you what happens if you do both. So we're going to do that. Now, what do you want to include? Well, I want my name there. So the producer of the image. Then remember, I mentioned that you could link your social media accounts and you could see that the connected accounts, I'll click this on, it says Twitter and Behance. You could click manage here, and when you do, you'll be brought to Adobe's website, your account on Adobe's website, and you could see that, more specifically, I have three linked. I have Behance, uh, Twitter or X, and LinkedIn. Instagram, I've been trying to add, but it keeps coming up with an error for some reason. Even though when I, what you do if you click add, it will bring you to your account on Instagram, you log in, I log in fine. It says, do you want to add Instagram? It's, I say yes. And then over here it says, an error, try again later. So I'm not sure why it's not adding that. You also have the option, if you're into NFTs, to add uh, supported marketplaces and wallets. I think MetaMask is a wallet. But either way, you could do that here as well. I don't, I'm don't, not into that, so that's not applicable to me. So once you complete uh, the connection here, then when you go over to this part of the export dialog, you'll see, for me, it's just saying, saying Twitter and Behance for some reason. It's not including LinkedIn, but it's there. You could click refresh. Maybe then if I do that, it will refresh. Ah, there now it did his LinkedIn in there now. So they're all in there. And then you include the edits and activity. Again, if you need to prove that AI was done to it or wasn't done to it or certain specific types of edits were done or weren't done, you definitely want to check edits and privacy and activity, I should say. I am going to go up here, though, and just rename it. Not to confuse the issue, I'm just going to call this monkey. And I'm just going to custom name monkey. Okay, so again, content credentials, you see it says early access. Uh, but it is in the latest version of Lightroom and not using a beta version of Lightroom or anything like that. Uh, so to just rehash, you have the, the four options, not to include them at all, to only have them in the cloud, or to only have them to the image, or to have them both with the image and with the cloud. And that's what I chose here. So we did that, and I'm resizing this image. That doesn't matter. What you put here for the metadata doesn't matter either as far as content credentials are concerned. So I'm just going to click export. It's going to be exported to my desktop. You can see in the top left-hand corner, it did it. Now, I have this image. It's maybe just very, very slightly larger than the file would be if it didn't have content credentials um, attached to it. But how do you know content credentials are on that file? Well, what you can do 
is if you go to this specific website, which I'll have linked in the description below this video, it's contentcredentials.org backslash or forward slash, I don't know what slash that is, forward slash verify. So contentcredentials.org forward slash verify. You could load or upload an image to it and it will tell you if content credentials were added to this image and what specifically was done. So let's click here and let's go to that monkey. All right, now you can see it's here. Now, if we look over on the right-hand side, it says that it was produced by me because remember I checked that checkbox to include that. Those are my social media accounts. Then process what was done. AI tool used Adobe Firefly because I used that brush, the remove AI remove brush to remove what was behind the monkey's head here. So that's why that's showing there. So if I didn't do that, this wouldn't be here at all so that people wouldn't think that AI was done to it. Uh, below that, you can see I color or exposure edits. I cropped it. Drawing edits. Um, now, I, you probably seem like I, you just use that one brush uh, to remove. Is that what that means? No, you know, I that's masking. So if you use masking, uh, specifically, I masked the subject. And remember, I used it to sharpen the monkey. That's where the drawing edits come in. A filter or style edits, uh, filter styles or effects to change the appearance. I'm not really sure exactly what I did that tripped that. Um, maybe the profile used, I'm not really sure. Uh, opened a pre existing file, uh, made other changes. So there's nothing super specific here, but you could see um, what was done and mainly, I guess, see that Adobe Firefly was used uh, for that. Um, area above the uh, monkey's head. Now there is another way uh, you could check content credentials if they're loaded on the file and that is in Photoshop. So we'll open this image up into Photoshop and here it doesn't give you quite as much information but you're able to check to see if content credentials um, were saved with the file itself and you can see it's open. What you need to do is go up to window then down to content credentials, you can see it's beta. This isn't the beta version of Photoshop, but content credentials are in beta. So we'll click there. You'll see a pop here. You need to enable content credentials. And then settings are for if you're going to export an image from Photoshop, what do you want to include? Uh, the producer, uh, connected accounts, again, your social media accounts, edits and activity. But we not worried about that. We want to see what content credentials are on this image. In that case, click on the preview tab. And here you could see that this image combines multiple pieces of content. At least one was genera generated with an AI tool. And you could see that the producer is me. There's my social media accounts. Then you could see those actions that was open and edited and the name of the file. So here it doesn't give you as much information about the editing it does say, though, that AI was done with Adobe Firefly. And that's when I removed this branch that was coming up above his head. I, like I mentioned, I probably would have left that there in, in real life, but I wanted to show you how it shows that AI was done on an image. So that's it. Um, it's still, as you, as you saw here in beta, and you saw in Lightroom Classic, it's called Early Access. So it's probably going to change. Um, whether or not it catches on is another point because a long time, not a long time ago, but a couple of years ago, Nikon tried to do something similar and it flopped. It just didn't go anywhere. So it wasn't, you know, anything, you know, they dropped it pretty quickly. I think Canon even tried to do something at one time. So whether or not this uh, takes off, if it lasts, if it becomes popular, who knows? But there's content credentials. At this point, that's all it is. It really isn't super involved yet. It isn't super complicated, uh, anything like that. And it isn't super specific either. But again, in the uh, description below this video, I'll have a link to this webpage so that you can easily find it. That's it. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon.